Have you ever felt different? Like you don't belong? Like everyone around you, your friends, your neighbors, just don't get you. And even in your family, you are the odd one out. Today we're exploring a truly different language. The language of the last nomads of Europe. The language that probably doesn't sound like any other language out there. Sziasztok! My name is Julie and welcome to the Hungarian language. Whenever I hear a language and I have absolutely no clue what it is and what it sounds like, I know for sure, it's Hungarian. First some numbers. Hungarian is spoken by 13 million people. It is the national language of Hungary, where it is spoken by around 10 million people, so by virtually everyone. And it is also spoken in the countries that surround Hungary. The biggest Hungarian communities can be found in Romania, Slovakia, Serbia and Ukraine. This all seems pretty straightforward, but what if I tell you that the closest relatives of the Hungarian language are located 3000 kilometers away from Hungary, somewhere in Siberia? So how did that happen? happen. Hungarian has always been an oddity in this otherwise rather straightforward region. Who lives there? There are Germans, we know very well who those are, been there since the Roman times. There are the Slavs, everything is clear with them. There are the Romanians, and even though they are odd a little bit too, but you quickly see the connections between Latin and Romanian, and you can easily imagine a story of why this former Roman colony speaks this language. But with Hungarian, it is not clear at all. Who are these people. When Hungarian tribes first stormed medieval Europe, their nomadic horse riding way of life and the ease with which they wreaked havoc upon everything they encountered on their way made the Europeans think that Hungarians were just another Turkic tribe coming from the endless steppes in the east, raiding helpless Europe with ease and grace as they always did. It wasn't until the 19th century when linguistics was born as a science that the theory of Hungarians being of Turkic origins was reviewed. It turns out that the Hungarian language was actually Finno-Ugric, related to Finnish and Estonian, and the closest to Hanti and Mansi languages spoken just east of the Ural Mountains. Finno-Ugric languages and more broadly Uralic languages are mostly spoken in northern Eurasia. The first Uralic split happened 6000 years ago, but there are still some common basic vocabulary shared between all of these languages spread on such a vast territory. One of the first interactions of Finno-Ugric tribes was with Indo-Iranians, the ancestors of the guys who would later establish mighty states way south, but for now they were nomads in the Eurasian steppes. They introduced Finno-Ugric people to things like cattle and metallurgy. Hungarian words for milk, honey and gold and many others entered the language in those times and are of Indo-Iranian origins. 4000 years ago, Finno-Ugric split again and the ancestors of Hungarians continued south and west, adopting a lifestyle appropriate for the steppe environment they found themselves in horse-riding nomads. This is where the Proto-Hungarians spent most of their history, slowly continuing moving southwest, arriving around the Volga region, mixing with innumerable other tribes that lived there. Spending such a long time alongside Turkic tribes, they adopted Turkic customs and many Turkic words entered Hungarian vocabulary. Through the first millennia AD, they continued progressively migrating westwards, passing by the Black Sea and in the 9th century, arriving into to a region called Pannonia, a beautiful land filled with blue rivers and green hills which could be so nicely and effortlessly conquered, being a buffer zone between East Francia and Bulgaria. So Hungarian tribes established themselves there. First, they were having fun raiding all of Europe, from Germany to Spain. But just a hundred years later, they converted into Catholicism and progressively turned into a respectful European kingdom with majestic buildings and classical music. Hungarians never forgot their nomadic past though. Their medieval kings claimed to be descendants of no one else than Attila. The words Hungary and Huns do sound alike, and the Huns did base themselves in Pannonia back in the 5th century, but the name Hungary actually comes from the name Ogur, a Turkic tribe who also roamed around the Eurasian steppes. Hungarians though refer to themselves as Magyar, 
The origins of this word are not very clear and it's probably Proto-Uralic for something like people. All we know is that this was the name of a major Hungarian tribe, the one that conquered Pannonia. Europeans called them ogres though, because, well, they couldn't tell the difference between all of these nomadic tribes, especially that they were all intermixing and adopting each other's cultures. This intermixing is even seen in the Hungarian DNA. The Magyar conquerors of the 9th century had a cocktail of DNA in them. Finno-Ugric, Turkic, Iranic, Mongolian, and whoever else passed through that step. Their DNA is actually the most similar to the Bashkirs, who still live in the Volga area and who also have a significant amount of Finno-Ugric DNA, though they speak a Turkic language. Interestingly, there is a story of Friar Julian, who in the 13th century ventured east to find those Hungarian ancestors. Even more interestingly, it appears that he did find someone out there and he could even communicate with them in Hungarian 400 years after the two groups should have split. Were those the Bashkirs who later switched to a Turkic language or someone else? We don't really know, but after the Mongol invasions, nobody spoke Hungarian there anymore, that's for sure. When the Magyars arrived to Pannonia, there were people living there already, mostly Slavs, and they greatly outnumbered the Magyar conquerors. Even though they adopted Hungarian language and ethnicity, they remained the same as before, and modern Hungarians today are genetically not much different from the surrounding Slovaks and Romanians. Through this extremely long journey from Western Siberia, through Eurasian steppes and into Central Europe, Hungarians somehow managed to preserve their Finno-Ugric language. Their DNA became a mixture of everyone they encountered on their way, and their language got mixed too. Hungarian vocabulary is only 20-30% Finno-Ugric, and it consists of large chunks of Slavic, German, Turkic, and Latin loanwords. Despite that, it is still a Finno-Ugric language, and we're going to see its Finno-Ugric features in the next sections. Since Hungarian kings selected the Catholic version of Christianity, they've also embraced the Latin alphabet. The earliest written text in Hungarian dates to 1196. Hungarian is the first written Uralic language and the one with the largest text corpus. Before adopting the Latin script, Hungarians actually had another script, which is sometimes called Hungarian runes. It does look like Scandinavian runes, but is not related to them. It is descendant from the old Turkic script, which is itself descendant, well, we don't really know from where. After adoption of the Latin script, the old Hungarian script progressively fell out of use, but apparently it was still in use in some parts of Transylvania up until the 19th century. Lately, there has been a revival of interest in this alphabet, but well, you might not encounter it very often. What you might encounter is something like this. This word means hungry, by the way. Now, how would you approach that? First of all, vowels. There are 14 of them. That's a lot. Well, finno ungric languages are well known for being rich in vowels. The vowels can be split into seven pairs of short and long vowels. Long vowels are marked with an acute accent. These two vowels change length and sound. O, A and E, E. The other vowels, E, O, E, U, U, only change length. Now we know how to read the vowels. Now, how do we read the consonants? Hungarian is quite phonetic, so every sound has its letter or letter combination. In total, the alphabet consists of 44 letters. Four of the letters are only used in loanwords, so they don't really count. There are 26 consonants, and the main thing you need to know is that the letter S is pronounced as SH, and the combination of S and Z is pronounced as S. Why? There is a large variety of consonant sounds, though most of them are common for the area and can be found in the surrounding Slavic languages. Because Hungarian uses digraphs to write some of the sounds, like ch or z, Hungarian words can sometimes look as intimidating as Polish. Nothing beats Polish, though. Yikes. Hungarian is also rich in palatal consonants. That's like normal consonants, but softer. Compare n and ny or t and t. One palatal consonant L has now disappeared and is pronounced as just Y. And another consonant Y is actually in our word. 
So let's come back to it and let's see how we read it. Remember that the stress always falls on the first syllable, another feature inherited from Finno-Ugric. And we get Magyarország. Now you know how to say Hungary in Hungarian. Well done! But let me stop for a moment and let's hear the native speakers. Így küldték fel Novák Katalin köztársasági elnöknek. Novák Katalin valami miatt azt a kegyelmi kérvényt, amit nem támogat az igazságügyi miniszter, úgy küldte vissza, hogy ő támogatja. Na erre kell a végső bejegyzés, az igazságügyi miniszter ellenjegyzése. És ugye maga Varga Judit volt fére is azt mondta, hogy hát, hogy miért gondolta meg magát, ez jó kérdés. De ne nem, nem. nem tudom, én, szerintem. Én, hát, hogyha megengeded ezt a kis kritikát, nem sikerült. Kérhetnénk ezt a mosolyt, már adás elején láttuk. Hát. <gül> és ez ezt, ezt kéri mindenki. Nem, milyen meglepő. Na hát nálunk itt az egész hajó, a komplet vezérlő Tényleg. megmozdult. Logisztikai szolgáltatások is kapcsolódnak, ezt a szerződést is meghosszabbítottuk, és kiterjesztettük a kiképzésre is. Továbbá megállapodtunk arról, hogy a NATO nyelvezetben kiválóságinak nevezett kutatőközpontot nyit a svéd hadipari vállalat. To be honest, I find listening to Hungarian super fun. It sounds so unusual and my mind is just trying to find some familiar patterns and it can't. How does Hungarian sound to you? And while you're commenting, I believe it's a good place to mention my amazing Patreon page where you can vote for next language. And thank you to my top tier patrons for picking Hungarian. And now that that's out of the way, let's move on to the real complex stuff. In Hungarian, the word order depends on what is the focus of the sentence. These two sentences are both correct. Anna Budapesten el, Anna in Budapest lives, and Anna el Budapesten, Anna lives in Budapest. The subject is always first, then the thing that comes right before the verb is the focus of the sentence. So in the first case, there is an emphasis on the fact that Anna lives in Budapest, not somewhere else. And in the second one, the emphasis is that it is Anna, not someone else, that lives in Budapest. In that sense, the word order is quite free, but not really, because it will change the meaning of the phrase, so you actually have to be very careful about the word order. Hungarian is an agglutinative language. That's when you can form endlessly long words by adding more and more suffixes. In addition, similar to Finno-Ugric and Turkic languages, Hungarian has vowel harmony. Hungarian differentiates between front versus back and rounded versus unrounded vowels. All vowels in a word can only be of one type, and when adding a suffix, the vowel should correspond. That's probably not clear at all, so let's see an example. Table, asztal. In plural becomes asztalok. It has only back vowels and gets a suffix ok with the back vowel. Child, Derek, has front and rounded vowels, so it gets a corresponding suffix and becomes Derekik. And in the word Ismerus, the last vowel is front rounded, so in plural it will be Ismerusuk. All Hungarian suffixes follow vowel harmony rules, and there are many suffixes. So many, because each suffix corresponds to a case in Hungarian, and Hungarian is extremely rich in cases. Every state, every location, every role in a sentence has a case for it. But these cases are actually quite easy. They are the same for all of the nouns, there are no noun classes and even no genders, they only vary by vowel harmony. That's why it is actually hard to count Hungarian cases. Some say there are 18 of them, some say more than 20, because sometimes it is hard to say if it's a suffix or if it's a case, or if both are the same thing or not. Hungarian also has definite and indefinite articles, and that's something it should have developed later on, because there are no articles in other Finno-Ugric languages, so probably it was adopted from German or something. But Hungarian went even further and developed double conjugation. Basically, there are different conjugations for definite and indefinite words. For example, látok egy házat. 
I see a house. La toma hazot. I see the house. The definite conjugation is used when there is a definite direct object, in this case the house, and the indefinite conjugation is used in any other case, whether there is a direct object or not. Apart from this little exotic detail, verb conjugation is quite straightforward, surprisingly straightforward. There are only past and present tenses, again typical of Finno-Greek languages. Hungarian actually did develop a future tense, but it is not used that much and usually you would just use the present tense to express future action. This was the story of Hungarian language and Hungarian people, a mysterious nation who came to Europe and conquered their homeland. Seriously, this is how the conquest of Pannonia is called in Hungarian, Honfoglolas, literally taking or conquest of the homeland, which sounds a bit like an oxymoron, but well, that's what it is in a nutshell, I guess. Hungarians kept memory of their nomadic past to this day. Every year, Hungarians hold the Great Kurultai, where the people of the Eurasian steppe origins assemble to celebrate their traditions. And behind all that, behind their new Central European homeland and behind their nomadic past are deep Uralic roots, which are well hidden but still visible in the mythology with things like the world tree that divides the world into three spheres and the language, which has kept its original structure and basic vocabulary, but has carried in itself the memory of all the travels and encounters along the journey of Hungarians to the taking of their homeland. Thank you so much for watching and see you in our next exploration.